I am here with Vivek Man, <laughs> man Spaghetti. Man, <laughs> I'm doing Man, man Bumblebee. I'm taking man that Bumblebee. today. Uh, Marvel's yeah. Army is my favorite. Marvel's Army, yeah, that, that was a good Attempt one. To be saying that. Where do people find you online, my friend? Uh, simply type the words at funny Vivek, and somehow the letter M, you might find me. You might someone find someone else, but you find somebody. Into a computer or? Phone, computer, anything connected to the wide world web. I'm sorry, world wide web. Wow, look at me. At Andy Curtin for me, you can find me on Instagram and everything else, all that jazz. And if you like the podcast, subscribe. Hit subscribe. No matter what platform you're on, it's going to be a way to get episodes before everybody else. And uh, we also have an awesome Patreon going on. We do bonus episodes every Thursday, lots of other fun content. You can find that at patreon.com slash ho-ho pod yep. for a couple of hoes I here. sound better on that one. Allegedly. <laughs> According to me. Who knows? Who knows? So today's guest, I'm very excited to have on. He has had a prolific 20-year acting career, has appeared in more than 200 soap operas, and performs the real deal canto pop. People say you are the most famous guilo in all of anywhere. Hong he's Kong? the... He's no, the no, 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 I wouldn't be. The, Gregory the, the, Charles Rivers. No, you, you're Pan Ding Hong. Oh, Chris Patton? Yeah, Chris No, Chris he would be the most popular. Famous, yeah. <laughs> he came in later. You were there before he, he showed up. The last up. governor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, were, you were doing more than just egg tarts. Chris Patton's already been on this podcast, actually, by the way. Wow, He's cool. in the intro. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. The intro <laughs> has one <laughs> phrase, you know, <laughs> putting him in on the podcast. But no, you are the, the OG Guaylo, the original, ga- literally the original Guaylo. Not even a gangster anymore. No, dude. there were a couple before me. Yeah, in acting, were, there were a couple before yeah, me. Yeah, but you were the one that if people were like referring to any sort of like a, a Caucasian actor in Hong Kong, you're like, oh, that's the guy. The yeah, police that's the that's guy. Him. Yeah. Did you, you know. ever meet Darshan, the, the Canadian guy that is... Oh, no, uh, Darshan. Darshan. Yeah. Yeah. No, Darshan. I haven't met him. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the big mountain. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, your, he's your counterpart, I think. No, he's a lot bigger than me. <laughs> he's way, way bigger than me. <laughs> well, different. I mean, he's Mandarin big. You're Cantonese big, right? Yeah. yeah. So, see, see what he's implying there? He's <laughs> like, less numbers, but way better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, 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 don't be between my lines, man. Let me say my own lines. No, yeah, that's true. Actually. That's what I think. That's what I meant. <laughs> no, that, yeah, guy is, that, that guy is pretty. He's super. I mean, he, he was a comedian. I don't know if he is anymore. But he was, he was studying under a master in the Chinese uh, two-person comedian oh, tradition. Sang yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sing, yeah. Sang Sing. Yeah, yeah. We got a Mandarin person here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Da- da- Dashan. I've done. He's done shows seven podcasts with Dashan. He's been on. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. He was the first guy I ever interviewed. Actually, I started podcast because I had an interview with him. I need to put it somewhere. <laughs> 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 I had nowhere to put you. Wait a minute! I'll open a new podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Just actually exactly what happened. <laughs> 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 exactly. Put copy paste. Okay, we have a show now. Let's so that was in Hong Kong or up in China? Shanghai. So I was in ah. Shanghai for ten years before I moved down here pretty recently. Wow. Yeah. So Andy came down here because like also for comedy and also he opened in the uh, comedy club The Riff I came down here to have my career destroyed yeah he, uh, but that's what a riff does right that's yeah. right oh not rift not yeah, rift R- R-I-F-F. <laughs> no, I R-I-F-F I thought it was a riff you said the riff <laughs> club not the riff <laughs> club yeah. it's funny yeah. how many people mess that up do people not really not know the word riff like, yeah but you're talking comedian I mean if it's comedian it's got to be a riff right it can't be a riff we'd be riffing off of stuff like yeah. we just like talking improvising. nonsense riffing improvising yeah yeah, yeah. but we, we ended up having the riff so yeah it was a typo Andy I now have a riff with the company that opened the riff if that counts <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right just to clarify Clarify. In fact, these are three English-speaking people discussing English terms in a in a small room. In a who English. normally don't speak English? What, sorry, there. Uh, we we normally don't speak English. We normally, this is the ironic thing. I don't thing. speak it well. So check this out. Whenever I have ever met Gregory in general for any sort of gigs or any events, usually it's kind of do with let's say Hong Kong identity and stuff like that. Yeah. And very often we are speaking to each other in Cantonese. And not very just, often, always. And always, and yeah. Are people just staring? No, no, no. They're used to us. They <laughs> yeah. expect it from us. Cause exactly. Because we're, we're Hong Kongers. Yeah, yeah. And sure, no, I get that. But but I, I would just imagine that maybe because the two of you are together. Yeah, no. It's Andy, like an elevated... Well, 25 years ago, I had another friend who's from America. And if we were at Yum Cha... Yeah. ...with the families, and we we're all talking in Cantonese, and yeah, we'd get a few stares. Yeah. <laughs> I get I get stares differently, though. <laughs> the reason they stare at me, they're like, oh, look at this guy. Who let him in? Who let this guy in? <laughs> it's a different kind of stare. It's still a stare. I'll take it. <laughs> no, but the funny thing is that if, let's say, the two of us, Greg and myself, are speaking at an event, and we're not speaking in Cantonese, we'd probably get bigger stares. 
right? The audience would be like, wait, I, I normally see these guys speaking in Cantonese. What is this language they're speaking? Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't understand them anymore. What, what's going on? Hey, wait a second. My Cantonese has gotten worse. I don't get what these two non-Chinese I don't understand their accent. <laughs> what happened to their accent? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, so let's go back a little deeper. So you're from, from Gympie in Australia. Uh, somebody's the, done their homework. The, the, yeah. the, 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 yeah. the leading town. Or the leading town. The, the de facto capital of Australia. Well, okay. <laughs> Must be a really different Australia. <laughs> 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 and uh, no, so I, I believe, if I if I understand correctly, is you, you discovered your uh, your passion for canto pop at that time. Is that right? No, that, well, well Gimpy was in Queensland, and then in 1980 we moved to the Blue Mountains in New South Wales. And then when I graduated from high school, we call it high school. It <laughs> oh, that's I me forget that. we you call it high school. We, we don't it call sometimes. it secondary school. Yeah. And we don't call it up or whatever. It. We right. go to Your high school. Higher than us. Where else? Are because most secondary. of the kids there are high. That's why. We, <laughs> that is, well, I suppose. And not in Katoomba, anyway. Uh, well, we might be high on the oxygen. I mean, we're so high up. We we went back there about 15 years ago after being in Hong Kong for 15 years. Wow. And you take a breath of the air and you go, wow. <laughs> this is this things? is really nice yeah, air. Your lungs are like, wait, what is this? Yeah, yeah. too much work now. I'm I haven't not used to this. had this for a long time. What yeah. happened? <laughs> How dare you give me this so much oxygen? Because the Blue Mountains are really high. I mean, we we get snow once every ten years. Well, actually, the the the, the tradition is small snow. This is like Chinese English now. <laughs> yeah. Small snow every three years and big snow every ten years. So it's pretty high up. The the, the air is incredible. But I was we moved there in 1980. And in 1983, I went to the University of New South Wales. That's where I met my Hong Kong friends. Mm. And that's where I came into contact with uh, Canto Pop. Do you remember listening to Canto Pop for the first time? Mm, I remember why I listened to Canto Pop for the first time. Um, I, was, we, we, I was already living in the dormitory yeah. on, on, on campus. Yes. International house. So, so international house is a rule like at least 50% of the students have to be international. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's called international yeah, house. Hey, makes sense, guys. But I was walking down the corridor going back to my room and I heard this music and I knocked on the door and asked the, the young girl inside, wow, that's really good. Can I borrow that? And then it was Kano I love how the story is clearly transformed because your wife's sitting next to you right Yeah, now. right. It was like, <laughs> I was like, it right, down. Right. This <laughs> guy's in, she's off. in his high school going like, is this some noise? I can't take this. What is this gibberish I'm hearing Cause, now? Because how, how often <laughs> when your neighbors are playing loud music, do you go and knock and be like, what is this fabulous music? <laughs> <laughs> could yeah. could anyway, you put it on louder? I, I, I've noticed the temperature in the room has suddenly gone up. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to change, continue the topic. Please continue your story of the innocence of finding candy. Uh, yeah, anyway, I took it back and I started yeah. listening to it. And, I was, and, and, you know, cassette tapes. Ah. Pretty hard to loop a cassette tape, but yeah. we tried anyway, right? Easy so rewind. You, you rewind and you play it, and you rewind it. and you play it. Well, no, the machine can rewind it. Ah. <laughs> it wasn't a manual rewind. Australian technology. <laughs> yeah. It was hard with you if you wanted to. At the time, um, Akai, um, um, Akai came out with a tape cassette player where you could actually pick songs and it would pick up the two would second delay it? between the songs and yeah. you'd be able to go back and re rewind one song at a time. So it would like detect a little gap and so yeah. we know which song starts and keep it, it would scan the tape as it was going backwards wow. or forwards, find the two second delay and then stop and then start playing for We've you. Just lost that was new technology at the time. Yeah, we, like, I bet you all yeah, like our young, young listeners are, yeah. are they're, they're dead now. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 just they're turns watching off, they're a like, TikTok. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're like, Akai? What, the berry? Well, what's Akai? Yeah, yeah like, like back in the day, Akai was one of the top brands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. their hi-fi systems and the cassette players were amazing at uh, the time. Yeah, that's A-K-A-I, not A-C-A-I, the berry. But yeah. Uh, so on, you, yeah. you figured out, though, you liked a few of them, like Alan Tam and Leslie Chung. Alan Tam, Leslie Chung, and then I went into Chinatown, started buying my own records. Um, and you and and speak any Cantonese. The thing about the Cantonese pop, uh, the, the records and the cassettes, is they all come with the lyrics printed. In, in the sleeve. Chinese, though. In Chinese. Yeah, so it doesn't so, help. But, and, and then in, <laughs> back in the 80s, so the useful. pop singers, and even now they're pretty good, but back in the 80s, the pop singers, every single character, you could hear them. Oh, right? Yeah, it was yeah. very, very clear. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're listening to the you know, pop songs and you're reading the Chinese, and because Chinese is a single, you know, every character has a single uh, element of time. Yeah. You know, it's a constant beat, almost. Um, so when, you, when you're listening to the songs and you're following the lyrics, you can follow every single character and you just learn to read Chinese. 
Wow. Is that how you learned Chinese? That's pretty much how I learned to read, I, uh, I would, to read Chinese. I really yeah. wish you would contact the education department <clears> in Hong <throat> Kong and be like, duh, could you teach people this way, please? Like, you know the <laughs> amount of times they have all these different curriculums? Let's teach Cantonese to non-Chinese this way. I'm like, oh, guys, please. It's not as difficult as you think it is. You guys are complicating it. Here you go. Gregory, right here. Sing a few You know songs. what? I'll tell you that I, after studying Mandarin where there was just so many options of materials that were really good, it's pretty limited for Cantonese, actually. Yeah. It's very I, limited. Um, yeah, it might be. By comparison. Yeah. Um, at the time, I bought this dictionary. Yeah. And Chinese at the time, you couldn't print Chinese back in the 80s. It was handwritten Chinese in the dictionary. In, in the in, dictionary, and printed out. Um, no, they, they, the author would handwrite the Chinese, and then they'd give it to a, an offset printer who yeah, would uh, it. photograph it and yeah. then print it out. Man, that's hard um, cool. So because you didn't have Chinese type yeah. at the so time. I think I think you've just basically <laughs> given everyone the solution to learning Cantonese. Find a really loud neighbor with a hi-fi system, yeah. play some canto pop and start from there. <laughs> Every word, ting, 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 like that. You can learn it. I mean, if you get them to hate it enough, they might just you know, go to sleep still hearing it. Yeah, <laughs> Exactly, yeah. In the subconscious. But just that dictionary was pretty expensive. It was $100 Aussie. Yeah. And that was back in 1984. You can buy three It's about $700 right Hong Kong. <laughs> exactly. That's like <laughs> I still got the dictionary. I mean, it's just a really special book. Do you still have it? Yeah, it's about this big. You still yeah, it's like uh, 10 inches high and about 6, 7 inches wide. You I remember when I started learning... It's hard cover. When I started Ooh. learning Mandarin in 2009... Uh, you would if you wanted to see, if you saw a character you didn't know you would count the number of strokes yeah, in yeah, radical, yeah, yeah. Yep. yep and yep. That would, and then you would count the number of strokes on the right hand side and you have to go to two different pages yeah. of the dictionary but it's easier for you why is that easy uh, for because you simplify yeah. Chinese how many strokes yeah, exactly. are there oh yeah right what like right. Right. Well, we're in traditional yeah. Chinese it's like well, fung well. fung. Yeah. okay the fung uh, uh, one two three four five six when when's it's gonna end yeah but <laughs> it's like counting like you kind of count until seven like wait was that seven or eight oh, is this one yeah, line for, or for two si for traditional it's like Seven hundred and sixty-nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you find the dictionary doesn't have the word like "god damn it." Come on, man. it's like even now because we were checking characters by looking for the radicals. Yes, right. Yeah, and uh, the, the people today don't know that. Yeah, so yeah. the new generation doesn't know to look up the left a, side a, a, a character by the radical. And so you got people and their, and their names are uh, you know like uh, Chan Yuk San. Yeah, yeah. And, and the San is actually it's, it's, it looks like. It looks like a king yeah, yeah. in front of the rest of the character. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the I said, no, that's not yeah. king. That's, that's Jade. Yeah. Is that Jade? Yeah, yeah, there's supposed to be a dot there. But yeah, what is a radical? Yeah. The dot's not there anymore. Yeah. It's not king. It's j And this is, these are, you know, the modern day people I don't know like that. I would like all our listeners to right now just imagine that previous three sentences was coming from a Caucasian man who learned Chinese through music. Who knows more Chinese than someone who went to a local Chinese school here? And I was like, really? Yeah, the Jade. Yeah, you don't have the dot, and it becomes, oh, you're right. I just hope that someone plays this podcast loud enough that their neighbours. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> what is that information about Jade? <laughs> it's King. <laughs> Jade is King. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I remember about three or four years into me studying, so like 2013, the smartphones got apps, and suddenly. You just get a dictionary, you just type it out with your hand and find it instantaneously. So it took five minutes to find one character yeah. to get down to about I've got the fish 10 app. seconds. I yeah, I've yeah. got the fish app. Yeah. And okay, I was okay. just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just wasted so much of my life <laughs> trying to do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah. then now you can just scan it, like the picture, you can scan yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bam, yeah. it really tells you what it is, right? Yeah. But I think the biggest problem is even the Chinese people now are forgetting how to write Chinese. Absolutely. Because you type it. Yeah, yeah. I, I never learned. I never learned with a pen because yeah, yeah. I thought I'd never need to. Very or true. I use pinyin. Yeah, yeah. people uh, probably forgot how to write with a pen. They can write with their finger. They can probably write the Chinese characters. Well, with it's their like finger. the Koreans. The K Korean I language used English to be Chinese, <laughs> and the only Chinese they've got left in Korean is their names. And you look at the written Chinese; it's really bad. Fair enough. Because right, they yeah. don't write it anymore. The yeah. only Chinese oh, they right. ever write is the judge, is judge. their names. <laughs> yeah, people can't write. <laughs> Clearly, someone over here is practicing calligraphy Look all day. But that's going to happen in Hong Kong because everybody's typing and they're not yeah. writing anymore, and so the writing is just going downhill. I think pens are on the way out. I wouldn't be inv investing in Bic anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> They're going down. Yeah, forget They're the that Kodak thing. of now. Yeah, uh, very true, very true. But then, so now, like with fluent Chinese, like your level is not even just simply conversing in ca in Chinese and Cantonese. Like you're clearly you know the characters well enough that you can see a lot of stuff. Like, do you get that? For my for myself, I can read Chinese characters, sixty percent of it, I would say. So when I go to restaurants, I can read the menu, no problem. What's your What's your boundary level? 
that you can read comfortably. Like I can read uh, gossip magazines. I can't read. Uh, no, I can read newspapers. Oh, really? You can even do like proper, like legit, like, like well-written newspaper. Yeah, not yeah, like, yeah, like, like, like the, the you know. yeah. Um, I'm probably ninety percent of the way. Oh, okay, wow, damn. So you actually know better information than I do now. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> like, hey, Greg, uh, what is this word? <laughs> like, this is gonna be the ironic. But um, <laughs> language is is split into passive and active. So yes. when you're speaking, it's active. When you're listening, it's passive. My passive level is far higher than my active level, which is normal. That happens to every man. Yeah, man. I find the same with my man. <laughs> yeah, everyone. So there. I can hear stuff on you know on YouTube and then political talk and whatever and yeah. understand. 99% of it, but you, if you ask me to just news, go back and, and tell it. He's like, what happened on the news? Man, bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. That's yeah, about man, right. Man, angry. I yeah. could understand all of that. What do you other say? People, man, bad. Exactly. Other people not like first man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a typical husband thing to say. I can listen passively. I know exactly what's going on, but I can't explain it. I it, can't. It's really bad, though, when you, when you suddenly realize that you're understanding words that you didn't understand five years ago yeah. because the political landscape has changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and these phrases are happening and so These often. phrases are happening exactly. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, like, flatten the curve. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're like, oh, why would you want... Uh, wouldn't we want more better curves? Like, oh, no, no. In this case, you wanted to flatten the curve. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so... so then put it this way, every time people think of, let's say, Ho Kwok Wing, the Ho Kwok Wing, by the way, uh, people consider like the Hong Kong identity. That's one issue that always comes up. And I'm sure you've had this a million times, right? What's the Hong Kong identity? I'm still team? counting. I think I'm up to about 900,001. Yeah. Oh, really? Then yeah, I'm one not up not quite at a million I'm yet. I'm at a, I hit a million yesterday. No, uh, what's, so, what's that for? <laughs> <laughs> the Hong Kong identity, like a lot of <laughs> times people ask, especially himself and myself, you know, what's a Hong Kong identity? How do you consider the Hong Kong identity? Do you consider yourself Who, a Hong Kong? Uh, what is a true Hong Konger? Yeah. yeah. So I've always been asked this question. And for myself, I've always said it's very simple. It's more of a, a mind, m- mindset mindset rather than skin color. That's basically my simple definition. Yeah, you're too brown to be a Hong Konger. <laughs> exactly. I'm too white and you're too brown. And oh, I'm actually pink I'm more than white. Right. Yeah, you're exactly. just right. Yeah. yeah, he's all over the place. Yeah, so one of us needs to get away from the sun. One of us needs a bit more sun, but we're always missing the mark. Just somehow a little bit you're going over it. So yourself, the Hong Kong identity, like in the most simplified way in your mind, what is, is it to you? Somebody who cares about Hong Kong and about Hong Kong people. Oh, there you go. So basically a, n- a good neighbor, right? Someone yeah. who keeps the hi-fi at a suitable level. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I'll take that. That's a good that's a response, <laughs> right? Someone who basically cares about the environment you're in. And I think because the, the thing is that what's funny is that a lot of times in uh, teaching nowadays, they talk about the you know uh, the identity crisis that we're having in Hong Kong where people don't really know who they are. And they very often would use my name or my story in textbooks. Have you ever had that? Mm, I don't think so. Really? Oh, I'm, I'm not as famous as you. I'll give you like this mind-blowing <laughs> story that really happened, right? So one day... We, He's I, just bragging now. I'm just like, <laughs> now that I have one up, one up to him, I, I've got to tell the story now. I've yeah, got go, it, go, right? go. No, the reason I tell you is because like, they won't contact you if they use you in like tests and textbooks i was never contacted never asked for permission so you you've never received any money i know no publishing fees no I mean, publishing there's... fees but yet a lot so of what kids you're learning. saying is that being having a hong kong identity is valueless is really what you're getting. <laughs> basically when people identify you as a hong konger they're like yeah you're they free won't now pay you for it yeah if you were a foreigner we'd have to pay so you so what you know? exactly is your your presence in so these yeah, why in your books so this is what happened right so basically uh one year in the liberal studies uh, mock exam all right the tong sik for liberal studies mock exam they you know they have these questions and usually like you pick one out of three uh tong sik four by the way means general studies okay yeah you yeah. might call it general studies right. now right yeah, general no studies, studies or, or, yeah. or limited studies now we, we would call it general studies i think okay. yeah right, so, so tong sek means yeah it's, it's supposed to be like common sense yeah yeah common uh, sense basically we're taught common sense in they school they teach ta- common sense in schools they don't you teach know. that in australia <laughs> Oh, well, we had general studies in Australia, <laughs> but it wasn't the same thing. Anyway, back to your story yeah, of the yeah, textbooks. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But uh, let me tell you this. Hong Kong students are, can learn very passively. They know what you're teaching it. They just can't never apply it actively. They have no idea what you're doing with that, right? But then I'll tell you this. So uh, I, I do a show. After the show, one audience is like, hey, I saw you in my exam today. I'm like, what? What do you mean you saw me in your exam today? He's like, yeah, you were in my exam. I'm like, oh, how? And he's like, oh, you were one of the questions. And I'm like, what the hell? I was in a question now? Let me explain. Like, a lot No, of I think the question would have been about uh, language study because his name is really hard to say for Hong Kong <laughs> Chinese people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you got two Vs in there, man. Yeah, yeah, they're like messing <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, Do we do, do, we do <laughs> the W? Do we do the like I? English exam. <laughs> he's <laughs> not from Hong Kong. Wee-wick. <laughs> Wee-wick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wick-Wick. All that. Wee-wick. I, Wee-wick. No, people attempt it. Oh, my God. I'm calling you Wick-Wick every day. Yeah, Wick-Wick every day. Hey, we have Wick-Wick with us today. I'm like, Ah, here we wick, go. Wick, yeah. wick. Wick, 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 
weird. Yeah. Anyway, back right. to the study. All right, real quick. Right, so basically, the the question really simply was, uh, it was basically talking about my, my story, living in Hong Kong and doing comedy and all that stuff. And then the question is, uh, what do you think about discrimination in Hong Kong? And I'm like, this has nothing to do with me. Like, why did you use my case study or like my story and then ask a general question? It's not specific to me, right? But then secondly, I was like, so this question is me, but I've never been asked about this. I don't know what the model answer is. And if I did this test and I You'd answered fail? it, I'd probably fail. I probably would fail as well. I mean, this is, this is crazy. No, we fail at many things. Oh, yeah. It's very yeah. true. Very true. Very but true. We, well, as Hong Kongers, we learn from our failures. Yes. Exactly. We can always pick ourselves up. All right. We're getting too excited over here. So, yeah. So, I'm famous textbook-wise. That's all I can say. I have I actually influence a lot of students but to the, fail you, their exams. You're talking about discrimination. And right now, especially in America... They're exaggerating. They're using the subject of discrimination to put focus and the magnification on on, on discrimination. They they they're actually creating discrimination by talking too much about discrimination and the types of di- discrimination there are out there. When I mean dogs and people, okay, for me a little bit similar because when I look at a dog, I don't look at the 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 type. You yeah. know, I don't look at the, uh, the breed. The breed. I yeah. don't look at the breed. I look at the personality. That's what I look at. Yeah. And that's what I can see because yeah. we've had 13 dogs. So I can see the personality. And when I look at people, I look at the personality. Yeah. I don't look at anything else. And so what's this stuff about? Oh, he's yellow. He's black. Oh, the blacks were persecuted. The white are persecuting the blacks. And and, and then they're actually focusing. And now they're telling people in America, oh, you're white. Oh, you're a persecutor. Oh, you're black. Oh, you were persecuted. You should hate each other. It's like... Uh, it's getting really bad over there right now, but in, in Hong Kong, we're still pretty much okay. Well, it, it's a mix and match, really. Like in Hong Kong, the good thing is that the schools are trying to encourage more open mindedness in the sense of like basically understand that the world's global and stuff like that. However, you still have two sides of it. I mean, like just like literally two days ago, I yet again, once again, my tradition happened of getting stopped on the streets by the police again. Right. Yeah, right. It, you know your problem, I, right? You're just too <laughs> way handsome to be. <laughs> to be <laughs> <laughs> That's what the cops usually stop people for. Oh, they're definitely, they're, they're like, too uh, handsome. Uh, "Sir, you're too handsome. Can I have your ID yeah, card?" Yeah, please? exactly. <laughs> no, man, this really happened to me. Like again, two days ago, I was walking down the street again, get stopped. I'm like, really? And I this time, so I you had your hoodie on. Not yet. No, you Not didn't yet. have your hoodie on. No, it was it was no. 4 p.m. I was like, oh, and, and, you, and your six. sunglasses <laughs> and. Uh, Unfo- I, unfortunately, I don't think they're dog lovers. These guys. Yeah, that's probably why. Yeah, they probably don't I think love themselves. They do enough. see color. <laughs> Very clearly, <laughs> they're like not color a lot of blind. people. Oh, I've like just <laughs> been to the beach recently. That's <laughs> all. Yeah, exactly. Come on, guys. Have you never seen the sun? No, but I mean, I, I see what you mean. As in, like, look, even for myself, a lot of my friends, very often, because when you get to know somebody, they forg- they don't look at you as your, your skin color. They don't so, see us like, as guaylos anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're just like another person they know. And I use this example when I go to schools to give talks uh, about basically like my growing up in Hong Kong. And I say that when I remember this one occasion where I went to my friend, my friend's Chinese, his house to play computer games, video games, right? And when his mom opened the door, she was a bit surprised. Like, oh, uh, 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 hello. Uh, uh, you know, she, was, she didn't expect this, right? And my friend at the moment was like, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell my mom my friend's Indian because he's my friend. So he never thought it was an issue. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's, it's not, not an issue. I don't know if this is real, but, but let me just throw this out there as a thought, is that I have unusual facial hair. Right. Yeah, yeah. And everybody notices. You have it. unusual. What do you? Little white yeah. patches. You all, right, mean, all right. All right. All right. No, I'm <laughs> I don't just, see color. All right, Mister. Right, so I mean, you're, you're whitish in the middle, and you. But if you didn't say anything, I wouldn't notice. People bring it up. Like right. at you need to get glasses. At, sir. People bring it up at me. <laughs> oh, I'm actually getting old. So say, yeah, there might be I a good point. I would say fifty percent of people bring it up, and the other fifty percent, some massive proportion of them. I thought it was a style choice. Thinking about it. Yeah. yeah I, I right. thought he did it on purpose. Well, I see. You can get with that. But in any event, the point I'm trying to make is that that's when I first meet people and if it gets brought up after i've known people for a while there was like oh, yeah, i kind of forgot about that yeah I, I think there might actually be an element of like how we process people that we meet yes. that when you do meet people yeah. you do focus on their but appearances. that's generally only for older people kids don't look at those things uh, it depends on the unless kid. they've been trained to look at those kids things. yeah, yeah. Bring, kids bring it up with me all the time you know and kids bring up race all the time i have very two yeah very but if kids children. bring it up with you it's it's got no inference it's just a curiosity not, question not saying that my, my observation is only how we process appearances because yeah. my kids Kids will, will point out they like the, they'll be, they'll point it out two kids look the same because they're the same race but they're not they're not there's no meaning to it to no them. there's no yeah. meaning the to fact it that they yeah see things exactly that are similar. yeah I mean another example I used to say again growing up I went to school someone called me an alien and not because he was trying to you know discriminate he was like oh you look different so are you from a alien? different planet. 
primary school. I was like six years old at the time. That's pretty you know? racist. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, that's, that's universal. <laughs> no, that's really bad for the aliens. I mean, to <laughs> yeah, compare exactly. you to an alien. <laughs> I don't want to be from your planet. You're like, hang on a second. Aliens don't speak Cantonese as well, <laughs> Exactly. Right? Back it is, he's well, the runt from the planet X <laughs> xylophone. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's be honest. At six years old, Cantonese was an alien language to me. I was like, what the hell are you guys speaking of here? I don't know what you're saying. No, but I mean, so I get it. I mean, you know, young kids are actually saying it out of innocence because like, you're different. That's the only reference they have. That are you from a different planet? From yeah, I was just making everything. the idea that maybe the, the the way that we process people is focused far more on period, appearances when you first meet them. Yes, yes, versus yes. when you've known them yeah. for a period of no, time. No, but I agree with you on the point that, yeah, it, in the sense that this issue of trying to talk about it too much, it's kind of like saying we're trying to be politically correct in comedy as well, right? When you're trying to be overly politically correct. Yeah. There's a reverse effect. Yeah, then it, you yeah. end up not saying anything. You're like, yeah, oh, I but I also not, think know. that we have our own internal biases that we don't realize. Yes, sure. And we that I and another one because this comes up a lot because I've run comedy clubs and stuff like that is like what you think is okay might not be okay to the person receiving it. Yeah, and that's a different situation. It's easy for us to say, but I didn't mean anything by it. I don't see color and all of that. But but the experience of the people that are affected by it, you can't really tell them what their experience is. You have to just listen. Exactly. So it, it's a really weird gray area. Yeah. Back honestly. to the kids though. The only two reactions I get from kids is. Oh, you speak Cantonese. That's a bit strange. Yeah. That's the first one, right? Yeah, yeah. But they're, you know, they're looking at me really strange. This, this Guaylo is speaking Cantonese. Yeah. And the other reaction I get is, Mommy, why isn't he wearing shoes? Because <laughs> in our village, yeah, you you know, never I, wear shoes. I never wear shoes. Oh, you know, I go oh, up yeah. to the store to have a cup of uh, Hong Kong tea or yeah. food or whatever. Wait, wait, wait. What I walk everywhere a, like, without shoes. They yeah. call, there's a name for that. like a, a Australian? <laughs> 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 that's racist! <laughs> I don't see them. That's not racist. I that's meant, country. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, I, I, I don't I see make... color, but I see shoes. <laughs> and you don't have shoes. So. I see fashion. I'm literally, the little, I was walking past this kid with his family and the kid does mommy why can't he why isn't he wearing shoes is that okay <laughs> <laughs> true because the kids are like you told me because the kids are like i don't want to wear shoes no the thing in hong kong is you don't wear shoes and they say why aren't you wearing shoes you're gonna you're gonna step you know, step on glass or something yeah, yeah, yeah. or something you're gonna really pick true. up it's a virus a, you know yeah. not, oh, it's unre- un- not an unreasonable that is, fear. that is such a typically hong kong local idea of like we go straight to the worst case scenario you're not wearing shoes oh my god you could break your foot and like crash it in a glass well i have well, broken a toe <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, but they're like giving you With, the worst because case. I was barefoot r- uh, running through the hills, and I I kicked a uh, the root of a tree. Was this because you heard some canto pop being played at the woods or something? You're like, yeah. You know. how, how, <laughs> how long after you stopped writhing in pr- writhing in pain were you like, oh, that's why they? Were it shoes. actually was only sore <laughs> for about five minutes until the next day, and then the pain started coming. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. I didn't want to know why you're running like in the in the forest. Oh, no, I grew up in, like, away from. We grew <laughs> yeah. up on a farm. We're going back to Gimpy, all right. This is the starting of the start of the podcast. Gimpy is only eighteen thousand people who grew up on a farm. Oh, okay. You don't wear shoes, shoes on a farm. Yeah, I was going to say, how many shoes do they have in the town of Gimpy? We had one pair of shoes for school <laughs> and made one pair of shoes for, for church. The whole town, and that was it. You know, <laughs> I love it. one pair of shoes for church, none <laughs> yeah. for home, none for anything else. <laughs> yeah, like, we don't I, need I them. Like, many, but is that one for the whole town or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. run inside and outside. You don't take your shoes off. You don't wipe your feet. You just, you know, you just, you just go run. wherever. And yeah, you, yeah. And the so, farm is so a hundred acres, and you're just running around so with shoes. So how weird is it coming from that life? What, do you remember when you first that's, arrived that's, in Hong Kong? That's the weird thing is, yeah, you, know, you grew up in a country, yeah, where the the close well, we, it's not Texas, right? This is a gimpy in Australia, so yeah, the yeah. closest neighbor is uh, probably five hundred meters away, or maybe a kilometer away. It's, it's not too far, not yeah. too. You that's can walk there far. in ten minutes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you come to a place like Hong Kong, where your closest neighbor is, or. Oh, just next he's to the wall. Play, he's yeah, playing like on the other side of the wall. He's playing canto pop on the other <laughs> yeah, side of the <laughs> gypsum board. Yeah, maybe the university you know, kind of like was yeah. a stand between, you know, yeah, getting yeah. used to. You know, okay, was now you're over- in a dormitory yeah. and you've got students on the upstairs. And on, on was it overwhelming when you first moved here? Do you remember? Where did you live when you first no, moved here? No, it was never overwhelming. You, you just loved it? No, I, did, I came here. I, I intentionally bought a one way ticket. Yeah, I remember that story. At yeah, the yeah. time, back in 1987. Uh, Hong Kong still allowed people to come here on a one-way ticket. At some time, uh, at some point, they changed it. They wanted people to have the day an exit after, strategy. I bet you the day after you arrived, like, yeah. how did he get They're here? Like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, we let a guy in with no shoes. We yeah. better change the rule on <laughs> <Yeah>. flights. <laughs> this is not right. How did this come in through here? You know, I had to buy another pair of shoes just for the airplane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but and now they take you, tell you to take your shoes off to check, so I guess you were so one step So back ahead. in Australia, I was singing Canto Pop. <laughs> I was going to Chinatown. I was with my friends. Almost all of my friends were from the Hong Kong Students Association. So And you're watching the movies and everything. So when I came to Hong Kong, there was nothing overwhelming. It was just really, really happy to be here. You just felt like you were in the movies finally? Like, that's exactly what in I saw movies? on screen. In the movies? No. <laughs> did you, did you already, how, what was your path into in being in movies and television? No, nah, that was an accident. Uh, pretty <laughs> I love how you like I tripped love it. and fell. I wasn't wearing shoes. I tripped and fell into a career. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's like the like one of the biggest names, like non-Chinese Caucasian actors in Hong Kong. He's like, yeah, it was a mistake. It I, was a mistake. I didn't want it. just happened. I, actually, when, when, when I arrived in on May the 31st, 1987, uh, I remember the day. That's why no, I, I remember I, the day. I, I, I had my concert three years ago, and we placed it. We started it on the thirty first of May, and it was called thirty one dash thirty one because thirty first of May, thirty one years oh, after arriving. Oh man, <clears throat> that's good. And the concert was in Cantonese all the Ooh. way through. Nice. So, uh, but when I first arrived, uh, all I had was uh, five thousand Hong Kong dollars and a place to stay at a friend's home. For one month, and that was it. No jobs, no contacts, nothing. Yeah. And I had no idea about what I didn't know. I could teach English and make a living. <laughs> it's like somebody. So about a month and a half later, I'm walking through Central and I find this job agency, and I say, oh, "What kind of jobs do you have?" And well, I haven't graduated yet. And uh, what can I do? Say, Why don't you teach English? But I haven't. I haven't graduated. I haven't studied English teaching. Or how can I teach English? Yeah, but you're a foreigner. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> so you're the OG. Foreigner teacher in Hong Kong, you began the trend. They're like, this guy hasn't graduated. He just came in with 5,000 bucks. Sure, you're qualified. Yeah, it's like if you were in Australia and you said, I want to teach English, then you got to go and get a degree, right? Yeah, because yeah. those people speak English. <laughs> There's a big difference. No, we speak Australian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, true, true. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a whole different language. No, but when I arrived in Hong Kong, so I was, it was, I don't know, it was coincidental. My friend actually lived on Broadcast Drive. And for people that don't know, back in the 80s, Broadcast Drive was ATV, RTHK, TVB, those were three of them, and then the, the, the three radio stations, they're all up on Broadcast Drive. They were literally the drive for all <laughs> broadcasting in Hong Kong, hence Broadcast Drive. Thank yeah, you. so um, I was living up there, but uh, no work, no nothing, and needed to save my money. So I wasn't getting on any bus or any taxi or anything like that. I was walking everywhere. Hmm. Was it as expensive? Was it an expensive city at that time? No, nah, it was not expensive at all. I mean, now it's prohibitively expensive <laughs> to do anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you know, this is thirty years ago, so it was it was relatively cheap. But I was walking everywhere to save my pennies, and uh, one day I walked down to the rail station and saw this upside down. Uh, <clears throat> The real station mean Kowloon Tong Station. Yeah, right? uh, like no, 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 the Kowloon Station. Oh, it was called Kowloon back then? Was it called the Kowloon Station it back then? It wasn't Kowloon Tong. Oh, okay, then. No, it's no, just, no, no, it's no. Just... I walked a lot further than you're thinking. Oh, damn, look at you, like, really saving your pants. No, I got yeah. okay, nothing to do, I just walked around. <laughs> yeah. I walked all no the way down. No shoes either. Yeah, yeah. oh, it man. Feet left by the well, end of it. Very I, I walked down and I saw this upside-down pyramid, and I'm wondering, what the hell is that? And um, and then the the back door was open. The pyramid, by the way, was the Colosseum. Oh, you walked all the way there. I walked all the way home. down. You know I the know big, the Colosseum. Yeah. yeah. Like so there's oh, a fair wow. distance, right? Yeah. That's a long way, sir. And you clearly uh, had no Google Maps <laughs> and no sense of direction. What was Google? <laughs> exactly. Back in the good right. old days. Um, and so the back door was open, and these four men were there having a cigarette break, and they saw me. They, hey. Hong England. Oh, what? <laughs> it's yeah. like they recognized me. I mean, I just arrived in Hong Kong, don't know anybody. Walked down, walked down to the Coliseum, and the four people beside the Col- Coliseum, they recognized me. Wait, why did they recognize you? Re- yeah, that's the point. <laughs> so, oh, look in at Australia, this. before I left, so in 1985, I was the driver for Leslie Chung when he had his concert in Sydney. And in 1986, I was the driver for Alan Tam when he had his Get concert out. in Sydney. Because uh, my friends, How you did know. How you land that job, though? Well, my friends, they were looking for, you know, free, free labor. <laughs> and they, they knew the people, the organizers in Sydney. And they said, yeah, we know you like Picardo Pop. Yeah, you know, like Leslie Chung is coming. You want to be his driver? No money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kill me in. I'm coming. <laughs> so I was his driver. And then, then I was Alan Tam's driver. And then when Alan Tam had his concert 
uh, became very familiar with the backup chorus and the dancers and the band people. So when I was back in, when I arrived in Hong Kong and walked down to the Coliseum, they they just finished their world tour. So Hong Kong was the last station in the world tour. And Alan Tam was in, inside rehearsing, and I had no idea what the Coliseum was, but they recognized me, told me to Huge go in. Huge venue, by the way, for anyone <laughs> yeah, listening. Yeah, 13,000 people, yeah. yeah. And um, I ended up standing backstage and watching 30 of his 31 concerts and being on stage for two of those. Wow. Because uh, when we were in Sydney, um, his backup chorus girls told him hey this guy though he likes your songs he knows how to sing your songs and so in one of the rehearsals he calls me up on stage and we're singing together on the stage <laughs> what that's a moment that, like, that's an that's, that's a that's moment a- fortunately i have photographs of that so Ooh. that's really cool i bet that's probably sealed the deal <laughs> like, i'm staying here i'm like no no, no 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 that was in sydney how influential oh. That that that, was that, in that the, the the rehearsal be, uh, singing That's with him a rehearsal was in Sydney. Oh, I thought you had the Coliseum. Oh, and then okay, and then okay. uh, basically a uh, short time after that, I said no, I don't want to do medicine anymore. So I'm going to stop the studies and three part time jobs, including a uh, brickies laborer <laughs> for a year, and then uh, one way ticket to Hong Kong, and then accidentally run into the Coliseum with these people and wow. end up with Alan Tam for a month. I, I would like to say anybody who ends up being my Uber driver, highly consider doing it for free. Because maybe... Who knows how I can help you in the future? <laughs> exactly. Maybe <laughs> I might recognize you how, one day at my next... But we haven't gotten back to the original question was how do I get into acting, right? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, but this is a very interesting this is story. And I just wanted to ask, how influential was that moment, do you think, to the, Zero. the trajectory? <laughs> you really? came from uh, You mean in Sydney or in Hong Kong? Sydney. Oh, no, Sydney. No, that was probably 90%. Oh. Be- between Leslie Chung, Alan Tam... And then uh, I was doing a lot of Cantonese singing in Sydney, you know, at the university or in Chinatown, entering competitions, um, and just really enjoyed it. Isn't it incredible to just think that, that one, him just looking over, I mean, like, you wouldn't get up here. And that just changes your entire life, everything that it's about, your identity, literally your identity. It happened before that. <laughs> well, you said 90% of it, so I'm just basing it on what you said. Yeah, um, between the two concerts, it would yeah. be 90%. Yeah. One, one of the parts of it is you, you're at the concert and you're seeing the reaction of the audience. You know, the, the whole atmosphere, everybody's going crazy and having fun. Yeah. And it's the music that I loved. Yeah. So it was um, like definitely like a moment in your mind, well, you're like, I can't believe I'm on stage. This is happening When, right when right Leslie now. Chung was there, he wasn't the only one. It was a group concert. Yeah. So he was one of the people who was starring in the concert. And they also had Mo Yim Fong, oh Anita Mui, Anita Mui yeah. wow. um, uh, Loi Fong. Wow. What, what's his English name, Loi Fong? Lo, he, doesn't, he doesn't have an English name. Um, yeah. Um, and then they had the Grasshoppers, Chou oh, Mang Tai. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That was super classic. These are like, I'm talking <laughs> Those like guys are amazing. The, the Grasshoppers. Legends. Legends. L- That's the, kind of a hacky name, though. <laughs> 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 no, the Grasshoppers. We're legends of industry. What should we call us? Grasshopper, <laughs> <laughs> like the movies. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was because they could really dance. Because there's three of them. Yeah, there like are three three men, big uh, boys. Leap. They were grammatically They're correct. They were really, grasshoppers. they could sing <laughs> and they could dance. They could yeah. do both things really, really well. Yeah. Play the violin with their legs. <laughs> 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 nice. So those guys, they went on for about 25 years. Mm. They were a serious group. Yeah, and I saw him a few years ago. I saw one of them performing in Canada a few years ago, and he was still on top of his game. Those guys are really serious. Man, it's. uh, I think very few people have the the are lucky enough to have that feeling of being on a really good live show that's killing and be on stage at that moment. Yeah, it's a different feeling, right? I'm oh, sure we've like, done... I did that once. Yeah, I'm saying like when you were at that... Well, your own show, I'm we, sure. We're talking no, about No, I was on a live show that all of Hong Kong, the whole night, oh, everybody was watching. About. Yeah, this is the 100 most... And I was the... Is that the one? Oh, this is a good this segue. One, right? Yeah, yeah. We we're going to bring that this up. That was another like... Can you tell us about this story? The 100 most... Yeah, but yeah the hundred right. most. Yeah, yeah, they that was another for a couple moment, of right. years they were rewriting the lyrics to popular Canada pop songs, and they were using satire to, to discuss social issues. Yeah, and one of the songs they uh, they they called me up and asked if I could sing it. Now, what was really important for me at the time was that I had uh, I had 
啱啱，啱啱 ，so Chinese man， Cantonese， he slips his Chinese words every now and then. I'm just happy. <laughs> just happy.、Yeah. I had just decided to give up on my singing because、um, in April of that year, my voice was at really good quality, and then suddenly in May, I had no voice left.、Huh. And、uh, I was I was getting these radio interviews, and can you sing something? Yeah, like, <laughs> and I'm yeah. Over, you know, couldn't hold a note, and I'm raspy and everything. And oh, what the hell is going on? And for two months, it was just really, really rough. And then I went and saw a doctor, and they said, "Oh, you've got acid reflux, and you've、Ooh. just burned out all your social, all, all your vocal cords." And、oh, your social so, cords, vocal, yeah, <laughs> social cords nice too, yeah. Well. Oh Freudian, God, forty and slip there. Hence、sir. the reason <laughs> I hang out. I I've hang never out. had social cords. <laughs>、exactly. Anyway, my friends are dogs. Go you、on. have what's wrong? You have no friends. <laughs> I have、yeah. no friends. <laughs> yeah, you have acid reflux. People don't like to be around you. <laughs> yeah, what's your, your problem? Personality, exactly.、Yeah. You're puking. Your personality is puking out, right? <laughs> That way, food doesn't want to hang out with you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it was really, it was, it was, but it was. Uh, yeah, almost like a miracle. They called me up and asked me to sing the song. And、um, one of my things is, even if I'm hesitant and somebody calls me to sing or to perform, even if I'm hesitant and I'm scared or I'm, or I'm just simply afraid, I'll still say yes. Hey, yeah, because it, it first, yeah, because it, it's a challenge. Yeah, I'm it, it's, that. it's the challenge to 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 move me to start working again and to do something. And no matter what happens, how at least I tried. And、uh, the song turned out to be a hit. You smashed it, Sma- dude. No, actually, the lyrics smashed it. The lyrics were amazing. Nah, Your performance,、on. buddy. I was watching that. I was like, oh my god. The first god. one or the second the one? The rap one. You started. No, the, the rap one was the second one. The first one was not the rap one. Oh no, then I saw the rap one. I didn't. See yeah, the, the rap one. one the first one was "Love Is Forever." Oh, okay. Yeah, by, I don't do by Jackie Chan. Oh, yeah, I don't do those songs. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's、yeah. when it happened. Love is not forever. I've been broken up before. So, did、yeah. you see this when it happened? I no, he watch, saw. I he, was watching live. He he I, saw I the, the、uh, he saw the conclusion. Oh. So this was back in in August. Yes. And we did the song. They had a small concert. They shared the concert with Ho Wan Si. Yes. Okay. Okay. In the clean in the Queen Elizabeth stadium. stadium. Yeah, yeah. And so I went and did the song on stage for that. Well, they had a fifteen minute thing in the middle of for it. For you to get.、Uh, yeah. yeah. And the song was then put on the internet, and it went crazy. Then at the end of the year, they had an award ceremony, and so all the people had been singing all these rewritten lyric songs over the past year. Were invited that the ten most popular songs were invited to the show to put on a whole concert. And there was awards, and we didn't know what the awards were about, and we didn't know who was getting what, except that ten weeks, I、oh、know, f- five, six weeks before the show, they called me up and said, "We've got another song we want you to sing because we want everybody to have two songs." <laughs> I was like, "Two songs, okay." And the other song really scared me, and that's the one you, you were the, the rapping, rapping one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that really scared Man, me. That was mind-blowingly impressive. I, I, when I saw that, I'm like, "Dude, this is properly practiced." This guy clearly. So you you、like、worked real hard at it. Oh, I I I started learning the song backwards. Shudu,、sure, this is a real parallel to Darshan again because that's what his real standout quality was was the level that he could do Shang Shang at, which is quite technical. Oh, it's really he's really high up, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's the same thing. Like you, you, it's a practice. It's an art, but it's a skill that you have to refine and, and my, work my, on. My my so my, you really worked at to get this. Difficult、yeah. piece. I have、out. to be scared before I work hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when I saw the song, and、yeah. <laughs> wow, cool song. Ouch! This is really bad. And was, they gave it to you. Yeah, and I、they、said, were, okay. I think this is the one thing. A lot of people know us that we speak Cantonese fluently, and everything, but I don't think they realize the level of effort we sometimes have to put in for certain gigs, where we're like, this is not how I normally talk. These are not the words I normally use, and like, this、yeah. is like whole different vocabulary. I sometimes MC events, and like the terms and wordings. It's they, different, different it's, vocabulary. Yeah, it's different vocabulary. I'm like, I never say these phrases. Like, this is a long jong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't ever talk that way. I'm like, oh god, I gotta practice the hell out of this. So, are I, you when you're hanging out with your friends, you aren't like, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. You and you assume friends. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like you、please. got acid reflux. Yeah, what's、well? the, what's the, yeah, what's the terminology used for please sit down? It's a really formal way of saying please be seated. And, and the thing about Chinese, which you probably know, is that a lot of the characters, especially in Cantonese, have multiple pronunciations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so the word for sit, if you're using it in casual language, is chao.、Yeah. But when you're saying when it's combined with another character, to me, slit no, the zao jaw. It changes the whole yeah, the whole yeah, pronunciation. Chao、okay. is to sit. And you, joy is like so if we just said 
uh, uh, Qing Jiao Chuo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's wrong. Like, oh, this <laughs> right. Look at this farmer. He's got no shoes on. Yeah. He can't pronounce yeah. properly. <laughs> well, you know, we're giving them a chance at least. I would give them a say it, but it's totally like, different. The yeah. the the, the uh, MC vocabulary oh, is a on. totally different thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can't handle it. Exactly. So I, I would have to rehearse it. Exactly. So that's when I saw you do that rap, and I was like, dude, this is not just the he's like you know foreigner rapping in Chinese. I'm like, those terms and everything is not what he normally speaks in, and this is like legit. You're practicing to the point it's mechanical memory. Right? My it's, family yeah. in Australia had just moved from Gympie to another place called Kingaroy, which is about three, four hours away from Gympie. Sounds big. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, three or four hours away. And we were driving from Kingaroy. We'd taken them out and we were driving them back to Gympie. And it's, it, we were in a kind of like a van. I was driving. And I remember this because of the song. I remember because of the song. And the whole trip I was I spent memorizing the song backwards because if you memorize it from the end to the beginning by the time you remember the beginning you've rem- you remember the end as well if you start from the beginning and, re- and memorize to the end it's it a lot harder or you're just doing segments backwards um sentences backwards so last backwards sentence first yeah, no yeah. not the not near yeah, like you say the sentence no, in like, normal like, order, but you start with the last yeah, sentence. I got it, I got it. That's what I was asking. That's what I was asking. Yeah, 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 so yeah. this is kind of ironic way to finish this because that's kind of the reverse of what your your neighbours did to you in college. Because how annoyed was everyone else in that car? <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, my, 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 my parents were not like, too young, so it wasn't too much of a problem. They yeah. the trip, they're like, wow, we really hate Canto Pop. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> song, <laughs> yeah, that was a three-hour trip of memorizing it, and then we practiced so it about good. 350 times before yeah. the performance. Oh, my God. And then man. when we got to the performance, uh, it was live. It was in the stadium. They had the whole concert. They weren't sharing it with anybody. Yeah. And I ended up with two award two awards and one was the the best the, the most welcome well, I don't know what yeah Joy the most oh, yeah, welcome yeah, the most song popular, yeah 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 and then the uh, the most welcome male vocalist yeah so I got two top awards that night that yes. was really incredible but that that rap song yeah ah oh, that was that, that was hard work yeah man I, I, all I can say is that this is something you can always hold for the rest of your life dearly but I'm pretty sure if someone says you want to do it again you're like no <laughs> I'm good, dude. I'm good. No, but I you, you like can't repeat moments like it. that. Yeah, you, those things don't get repeated. Yeah, those are moments no. that you basically just run with it, and it is what it is, and that was the what happened. It, you, when you get to my age, you realize if you have a really good moment and you try to repeat it, you are doomed. <laughs> you cannot repeat a good moment. So even when we're acting, and so you're doing the same scene, and you're not going to do it once. You can do it three or four times if you're lucky. If you're unlucky, no, we, in Hong Kong, we're going to have time to do it seven times. So yeah, yeah two or three times. You don't. If if you get a really good feeling on the first one, you don't try and repeat it because if you try and repeat the feeling you had on the first take, it's not going to work. So you just have to acknowledge what you have and use what you have each time you do the scene. Love Gregory, thank you so much for coming on today, man. It has been awesome. <laughs> I really <laughs> thank love the stories. Thank you so much.